Okay, Sony Movie Studio is done compiling the video and now it's ready for me to send it over to Architect. All I gotta do is click on the Send to DVD Architect Studio and it'll take me over to DVD Architect. Let's actually open up DVD Architect and begin working on it. Okay, we're in DVD Architect, the opening menu, and I'm gonna actually start off by doing a new menu. Here we have a choice of whether we want to do a menu based or we want to do a single movie. Or we, we can also do pictures and music. For this one, I'm going to choose a single movie. Okay. And I'm going to make sure I grab the DVD that I've been working on. Let's check. I might have put it in one. Okay. The video is Lifestyle. DVD one. Okay, it's a pretty large movie, so it might take a little while to load up. Okay, here's the movie. It loaded up the full movie. Top, there's no menu. So if we do preview, you'll see it'll actually start showing us the movie. We have our little remote control over here, but we're playing the movie. Let's skip forward. We can skip forward. We can play it. We can pause it. But now we just have a full movie. It would just start playing the movie from the very beginning when it started off. I'd like to add a menu, so I'm actually going to go up here and I'm going to insert a scene selection menu. I right clicked on my mouse button and I'm then choosing insert scene selection menu. Now I can put the page title. I'm going to call create your own information retirement business. You can choose how many links per page. Let's choose six links per page. Uh, let's actually go smart. Let's just go with four links per page. Okay and it now created me several menus. Let's go to one of the menus. Okay, it's actually still compiling it since it's a large video. But here's the menu. Here's one of my menu pages. You can see that it broke it up into three separate videos. Some four separate videos. Let's go to another menu page here. The video that I actually have open here is an hour and 40 minutes long. That's the reason we have a little delay coming up while it loads up the next page. Okay, we have four videos on this page. And if we keep going down, we'll see that we have another little menu it created here. And so we have all these different menus that it created. And we can go up to the main menu as well, right here. Okay, so here's the main menu, and then we have the main movie as well. But here's the main menu. Now, I don't like having this blue background, so I can go in and I can change the backgrounds. Down here at the bottom, we have our different backgrounds that are already set. Let's grab any of these backgrounds to, to put it up there. And just load it up there. Or I can go over here to the right as well. Let's just click off of here somewhere and I could put a different background media right here by replacing the background media. Let's say I wanted to put this graphical background right there. Notice for that all I did was I made sure I wasn't clicked on any of the links. I left clicked on the screen inside of the background, went over here, made sure it said background media, went down to this section where it says video, and then I replaced it. Now I can replace the background with a video if I like as well. Like I could replace it with the test video. And it would actually play a video in the background if I wanted it to. I'm sure that you've, you've had movies that you've rented, DVD movies that have a video playing in the background on the main menu. We can do that real simply, just like that. Or we can have a video in the background. I can also add audio by going to this audio section right here and replacing it with audio. Let's go with this audio right here and it would actually play an audio. If we go to preview, you'll see it's playing the audio in the background. It's playing the audio in the background. It has that little video playing that I had, which was bringing the big ID in. We have our different chapters that we can click on. We can go to another page by clicking here, 
which will bring us to more menus. Or we can click on any of the specific videos to go to those. That's enough of listening to me. Let's close that off. But we can go through and we can change each of our menus in the same way. So I can change this menu. I can go down here and I can change this menu out. And let's replace it. Let's just go with a background graphic. Oops, that's not what I wanted. That's a cover. Background graphic. background graphic on all these. Okay. Now notice I can also change the theme of how the background is set up down here where it says themes. I just click on the theme and I can go and choose a different theme. For example, I might want a corporate theme. And notice now, instead of displaying it as images, it displays it as single links. That I could go in and I could modify these links if I wanted to. I could go in and edit the text. I just right clicked on the text and I can choose edit text and I can actually edit the text here. Okay, if I want to I can go in, edit the text. We can even make the font change right here. We can change the font. I can bold it if I want, italicize it. I can change the font size. I can make all kinds of changes to the font while I'm playing around with it. And again, just like on Sony Movie Studio, play around a little bit with the DVD architect to to get the DVDs looking the way you want them to look. Okay, I changed the format, but let's say you just saw that I changed the theme, but maybe I don't like the background of this theme. Well, let's go over and let's just grab a different background. Okay, I kept the same thing, but I changed the background. Or I could go over here off of it, make sure we're on the background, I can replace the background again with my own background and have that theme. So it's really easy to change all my menus. And then I can also choose to start my DVD wherever I want. For example, let's say that I wanted to set the DVD start on this first menu. So just right click on it choose set DVD start and this is the menu it'll start on. So you can play around and do a lot of different things on making your DVD. As you can see there's buttons down here, we can change how the buttons look. I can add a button up here if I want. I don't really want this button so let's delete it out. But basically you can play whatever you, you want to. You can edit it around. You can see over here I can change what it says. I can follow the links. I can delete a link or do whatever else I want to do with it. Nice and simply when you get finished with Architect, go up to Make DVD. I'm going to choose to burn it to a DVD. It's going to save it to a temporary folder. Make sure you have a folder that has a lot of space on it. Go to Next. It's right here. If there's any problems, with your DVD, it's going to tell you in this section. It's going to tell you if there's a problems or if it might need to optimize it. Maybe it's too big for a DVD. This one says it's only going to take up 44% of, of my media. So that's fine. Let's keep on going to next. It's going to produce. We're going to say what the volume is going to be called. Let's call it, um, okay. You can change the volume, the speed of your DVDs that you're going to write to and then you just simply click finish and it's going to create your whole DVD on the DVD media that you have in your DVD burner on your computer. Nice and simple. I'm going to cancel it here. But so it's really easy to use DVD Architect. It's really easy to produce some nice DVDs using this software.